Yeah. You get the idea. Okay, and that leaves you with this. All right, we'll leave that to dry. Right, these have been drying for a couple of days um, because obviously work and things. Uh, let's quickly take the tape off and see if they've stuck. Right, well, they appear to have stuck okay. Yeah, uh, I mean they've got to be sanded down and profiled. Seems to have been a success. Okay, so I've got my front panels here. I've got two of these obviously. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to change those into slats. So on our design here, you can see these are slats. Now, what I want to do is to, to keep as much strength in this as possible. I'm going to leave the outside frame is one piece and I'm basically going to cut out grooves or holes um, so it's all still one piece but it's just with holes in it now i could do this by drilling a couple of holes and using a jigsaw uh, but that would be far too easy so what i'm going to attempt to do is use the cnc machine literally just to cut out the holes um, and hopefully give me something like this so my problem is this is this big Let's go over to the CNC machine. It just about fits. Now I've never cut anything this big on my CNC machine before. Uh, and the problem is, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, uh, but this line here yeah, determines how much of a cut I've got. And this is bigger. Uh, so I've got a cut within those boundaries. Now what I've done is, let me quickly run through the design uh, and hopefully it's going to work. So let me turn the camera around and show you what I've designed. Right, hopefully you can hear me this time. Uh, it all went wrong, I didn't get any audio, uh, so let's try it again. Right, I'm going to use Vetric Aspire, which is this software that you're seeing here. Um, and the process is I'm going to run through very quickly. Okay, so first of all, I set my dimensions of my workpiece, which is here. Okay, that's each panel of the uh, radiator cover. I set the thickness here, okay? Uh, and then that gives me my sheet of material that I'm going to use. Okay, and what I'll do is, I've already done the design here. Uh, then what I've done is I've created um, some, basically some rectangles, okay? And I've made those rectangles with round inner edges uh, I've equally spaced them on the board. Yeah, so what's going to happen then? Obviously, you can see these are vertical, but it's because it's on its side, it's going to end up being uh, horizontal. Um, so I've equally spaced those. So, in theory, the CNC machine will cut these out, and I'll end up with a hole, 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 etc. Okay, once I've got all of these equally spaced, that took ages. Um, but this is just to show you how I did it. Then I, I select all of the, uh, these are now called vectors. Okay, these are all called vectors. Uh, and what I do is I select all of those vectors. And then what I do is I select my over here. This is my, basically my, my tool paths. I select a, a profile cut. Uh, I set how deep my cut's going to be. Now it's 9.1 millimeters, so it's slightly deeper than the material that I've got. So it cuts all the way through. Uh, I'm gonna use, my tool is gonna to be an end mill, three millimeter end mill. Uh, it's gonna cut on the inside of each of these squares. Okay, rather than on the outside, because obviously that would be an extra three mil either side. So I'm gonna do it on the inside. Uh, I'm gonna do a climbing direction cut Hopefully that will clear a lot of the sawdust out as I'm cutting. Uh, then down here, 
we want to add some tabs and our tabs are little pieces of material leaves behind uh, so once you cut these squares out it the square doesn't fall out and get in the way and get tangled up in the uh, in the cutter okay so add all those tabs um, then what I can do is quickly calculate my tool path it reminds me that my thickness of my material is only nine millimeters and I'm going to cut 9.1 millimeters which means I'm going to cut through which is what I want to do okay and then it gives me a quick profile uh, a quick preview of my profile and then if I do preview selected tool paths it will show me what it's going to cut okay so this is it Right, so I've got some of it stuck together with tape at the moment. <clears throat> now the next issue is on the picture here, uh, on the, uh, let's see if you can see, probably not. Uh, on the front here, there's a little groove all the way down. Can you see? There's a little groove all the way down. Now, I would like to do that down the front on each of these. Uh, the problem is I don't have a router bit that's big enough. Uh, and what I want to achieve is this sort of design. Yeah, so just a, a single groove all the way down like this. Um, so what I'm going to do is, because I don't have a router bit big enough, uh, I'm going to use my table saw. Now obviously a table saw is used to cutting in a dead straight line. So Frank's going to cut it at an angle. All right, let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I've done on my table saw here, this is the normal direction of cut. This way, here's the blade. Uh, what I've done is I've put a guide rail, or two guide rails, diagonally across the blade. Okay, not touching the blade, obviously. And the idea is, my piece of wood, or MDF, that I want to cut the groove in, I basically run it, I'm just moving it, along the guides, if I can get it in, along the guides, diagonally. Yeah, and then that will give me this groove that's the plan and now this makes a lot of mess um, so let me get this set up properly and I'll try and do them Right, well I think they worked. Uh, we got this up right here, which has got our groove in it. Same with this one. And obviously the centre one as well. So, uh, yeah. Success. Okay, so the next bit is on the uh, grills here. These edges are all a bit hard. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to round them over using my router with uh, this round over bit and a guide bearing uh, now what they should do is give me an edge like this nice and round so I'm going to do that on all the edges but the problem is I've got on these bits with the uh, the routed out bit in it uh, the bearing obviously is gonna it's gonna fall into that hole so that's not gonna work so I've got to come up with a different solution for that but for now, I'm going to route the grills. Um, 
and soften those up a little bit. Okay, that was relatively successful. Uh, I've softened the edges up a little bit on this. Uh, if you're ever routing uh, MDF, um, just make sure you've got enough extraction. I mean, I've had this extractor go in and my air cleaner up here. I've had that going as well, as well as my shop vac. Okay, so make sure you've got enough extraction because it's horrible, nasty stuff. Right, so that's those bits. Now, to address this situation uh, with the routed out bit, obviously I, I want to do a profile on this edge, but my guide bearing won't fit in here. So, this is one of the accessories that comes with most routers, palm routers like this, which you never use, but I'm actually going to use it this time. Uh, it literally bolts on here and it gives you an extended runner. Okay, so what hopefully you'll be able to see this. So that should then run on that bottom rail and give me the same profile. Right, I'm going to do all these ones and see how it works. Right, so that worked really well. Uh, now, obviously, that's an accessory I got when I bought this, which is the Bosch, whatever that says, uh, GKF 600. Uh, now, that worked really well. But, just so you know, uh, I bought one of these from Aldi's. Uh, it was 25 quid, uh, which looks very similar. Okay, so very similar to the Bosch. Yeah. Obviously not as good, but not as expensive. But that also came with one of these. Uh, so if you have bought one of the cheaper ones and it's got this, don't throw it away thinking you're never going to use it because uh, one day you might. But yeah, that works really well. Right, on to the next bit. Right, so now all these bits should assemble into a radiator cover. Uh, I'm going to do a dry fit and I'm going to try and stick it together with some tape. Uh, before I actually do any gluing uh, and see if there's any improvements I want to make. So let me get this on the floor and start assembling. <laughs> Okay, so I've got it stuck together now with tape just to see if there's anything I want to improve and yes there is. Uh, firstly, the edge on here. This is a raw MDF edge. I haven't profiled this yet, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to edge trim that. I've got some old bits of pine here, which is off of an old bunk bed. Uh, I'm going to cut this down into thinner strips uh, and then stick them in the edge and then trim it. Uh, also the middle well, the whole front, because there's not a single piece of material that goes from one side to the other, um, it's a little bit flexible in the middle. Now, that's not a problem, but if someone bashes into it with a, a vacuum cleaner or kicks it, it's, it might break, even after it's stuck together. Um, so I'm going to have to put some strengthening battens across the back. So, first off, I'm going to get these through the plane, the thickness up, make myself some edging strips. Right, so I've planed down my bits of uh, bunk bed, turned them into quite thick bits of trim. Uh, I've done a 45 on each end, uh, and I've got a couple of little extra pieces for the ends. So I'm now going to glue this, so a quick layer of glue, stick this up, clamp it up, and then leave it overnight. So, let me get on with that.
Right, that's that. I'll leave that overnight to uh, to dry. Plenty of clamps on there. A uh, bit of tape on the ends, just to uh, hold the end pieces in place. Uh, I have put it on paper. Uh, that's just to stop it sticking to the bench. Right, I'll come back to that tomorrow and hopefully I'll be able to sand it down. Okay, so this has been sticking overnight. Um, the edge trimming is all on. Uh, I've taken all the clamps off. I quickly give it a quick sand. Um, but now I'm going to run the profile with my router around the top edge and that will help trim it off. So I'll quickly do that and then give it a bit of a sand. So I'm almost ready to uh, stick it together with a bit of wood glue uh, and obviously stick all the screws in the uh, in the pocket holes. Um, now the cross brace which I'm going to use, uh, which is this piece of Sapili hardwood, um, I've just basically drilled a load of holes in it at equal distances um, and this is going to go across here, across the bottom. That should give it a little bit more strength. Uh, right, the problem is this floor in here isn't quite flat enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it into our hallway because we've got a laminate floor which is nice and flat. So I'm going to hurry up and do that before uh, Mrs. Little Workshop decides to change her mind and doesn't let me do it. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, it's all stuck together now. Um, I've cleaned up the hallway like a good boy. Uh, I've now put the uh, the new top on with its edging, which is good. Uh, now all I've got to do is clean off some of the squeeze out from the glue and give it a good sanding down, and then might hit it with a little bit of white spirit to clean off all of the uh, the rest of the dirt, uh, and then get on to paint it. But first of all, got to sand it. So I'll do this by hand, I think, rather than. Uh, by using a, a sander. Here we go. Right, so that's all the cutting and sanding and everything done for the moment. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a coat of uh, this stuff, which is Ron Seal One Coat, uh, primer and undercoat. You probably have to do a couple of coats, but it is one coat, allegedly. Uh, I was going to use my little spray gun, which is quite a nice little thing, uh, but it takes a bit too much time to set up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat it with this stuff, using a roller. Uh, I'll start from the inside and see what sort of finish I get. Uh, I'm going to be flattening it down between coats anyway, so let's see how we get on with this. Let's give it a good old shake. And then start painting. So the first coat of primer is on, uh, we're going to leave that to dry overnight, I've just washed out my brushes, uh, so I think I'll go and have a cup of tea and come back to this tomorrow.
Right, so where are we? Uh, right, so I've quickly sanded it down a little bit with, uh, with this, which is my work zone cordless random orbital sander. Uh, set up a little bit of protection here and I'm going to use my spray gun um, because the first coat wasn't that fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to quickly mix up a little bit of uh, primer here and then give that a shot. is working really hard right as you can see my little extractor here has been doing its best to get all that out of the air which he's done quite a good job of uh, right done the first coat that was such a pain I've ended up having to take my gun apart and wash it and then clean it and it still had some paint in it from when I did my kitchen about five years ago uh, right that's the first coat of that I'll probably have to give that another coat tomorrow um, Right, I've cleaned my gun. Don't forget, clean your gun. Right, let's try again tomorrow. Right, this is now had three coats. Uh, I'm going to leave this overnight to dry. Uh, I'm going to turn my extractor back on. I've cleaned my gun. Uh, now this is a really good gun. It's only a Clark cheapy one, but yeah, once you get it working, it's really good. Right, let's leave this to dry. So and that's it, it's all done. And here it is. There's no big reveal because you've seen me painting it and everything. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with the way it's turned out. There's been a few techniques I've used, uh, like this profile here, uh, which I've never done before. Um, yeah, it's a nice thing. I know you can go to B&Q or Homebase and buy one, uh, but this was a specific size, uh, and it was for one of my mates, Sean, uh, who probably won't even watch this video, but uh, this is for him. Uh, I quite like it. Uh, the edges of the MDF, I'm glad I covered up the top here um, because it does give a little bit of a furry feel. Um, yeah, if there's anything you liked about the video, uh, if you're interested in any of the tools I've used, like the, the cordless orbital sander or my spray gun or anything like that, let me know in the comments below uh, and I'll do a quick review if you want me to. Okay, hope you like the video. Please share it with all your friends on social media if you can. Uh, I'd like to get as many viewers as I can. Um, and hopefully he won't ask me to make another one. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. Gonna cut these down in. Okay. I'll get my notice, get my channel, yeah. yeah. If you did like the video, please share it with all your friends on social media, um, which is, uh, I still, which we're off of a bunk bed. Uh, I think I'm, That making stuff in a small workshop, like little workshop, making anything big is a pain. I really want a join. Um, but on the picture, wait. 